Jen and Alan. This is the Mega Maniacs of Grip here. This is episode number 11 of This Week in Grip. And remember, everybody, the first rule of grip sport is you tell everybody about grip sport. Don't be holding back. Don't be keeping it a secret. Pass it on. Alan, how are you doing, my man? Real good. Been a been a decent week of training so far. So I've got a oh. workout plans for tomorrow. So pretty excited. We'll see how that goes. How about you? Cool, man. Cool. I, I dude, I just my hands are still chalky, bro. I just walked out of the gym. So I I pulled a two a day today, man. I did chest, arms, more chest, and then some shoulders and more arms this morning. And then I did some legs tonight. Very little legs. Very little legs. And I'm saying that's both the volume of legs that I did and the legs that I have on my body. <laughs> and then and then a bunch of a bunch of grip. I was like, what? In the he-? I was I was like feeling real flat, and I'm like, what the heck is going on here? And then I realized that I'd already trained this morning, so I I forgot that I'd already gone down there. So because I don't usually do it, so it's kind of a new thing. So I forgot about it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're still riding the waves of your of your of your new feet that you pulled off finally. Congratulations! That double forty five pinch. That's some yeah, impressive stuff. A lot. Thanks a lot, yeah. Alan. Yeah, man. I uh, I can't even put into words the feeling of when I got it, uh, and then the response of everyone uh, making comments and watching the video. I mean, last I looked, it was up to like 2,200 views or something like that on YouTube. You know, in only a week. And uh, man, that's I haven't had one of those popular videos like that in, in years. So I don't know if I ever have. To be honest with you, but um, yeah, it's. Uh, that's a feat that uh, I'm not sure a lot of people are actually training it. So it's it's not like it's, you know, trying to close the number three or anything where everybody's gunning for it. But um, I know a lot of people have tried and not been able to do it. So, But that was one of the things that I told myself in October when I, when I hurt my back that there was enough messing around and I was going to do it this year. So really, really focused on it hard and was able to finally get it. So it's like a weight off my off my back, that's for sure. Yeah, no, that was that was awesome. You know, I don't think a lot of people realize what what type of feat that really is. You know, pulling yeah. on some those 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 York forty fives, those the way those things work, they might as well not even be the same brand of plate for how well they, they made up together. You know, they just <laughs> just completely different fits. You know, there's nothing easy about yeah. that at all. It's definitely not like the, the newer, you know, Ivanko's and rogues out there where everything's just you know precision machined and the same thing. It is it is just a right. incredibly hard lift. So yeah, that's yeah. how it works. Yeah, mo- <clears throat> seeing someone do a pair of forty fives in each hand uh, is pretty rare in itself. Even with like your your normal you know the standard run of the mill plates that you see at a gym, and you know that's mainly because of the weight. You know it's it's tough. But with the old school Yorks, the inside rim, like the outer edge of the plates, is so thin that when they meet up, you've only got maybe, I don't know, three-eighths of an inch of of contact surface. And really, it's even less than that because the tip of that rim is, is rounded. So if they shift it all, they can slip right out of your hand very easily, and and what they do is they almost they fold up inside of one another. So the one that will generally what happens to me is the one that's on the finger side slides inside of the one that's on the thumb side. So uh, yeah, it can get it can get pretty frustrating. That's for sure. That's for sure. I think it took me like, I mean, I had the plates for, um, I think nine years before I finally got them one-handed. And then that was 2013 when I finally got that. And then since then, I mean, I haven't, it's not like I'm down there every day trying to pinch them. It, it, it hasn't been like that. So it hasn't been three, four years of dedicated training, but several bouts of two and three months where that was the primary feat that I worked on. And uh, I, I was really close in October of 2015 when I was training for, 
uh, the appearance that I was going to make at the AOBS because I was considering doing that as one of my feats, but I, I just I just couldn't make it uh, consistent enough, so I kept that one at home. Sure. And that was that was just uh, I was only good with one hand. Once once I shift them over to my sides, that's the other thing, man. When you shift plates off to your side, you 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 lose some leverage, and it becomes even more hard just because of the mechanics of the lift. So that's another thing that's that's frustrating. But yeah, got it done, and it was an incredible feeling. There's no doubt about it. Right, right. No, that's awesome. So what's the What's your plans now? What's your next big feature thinking about going after? Are you going to keep it keep it under wraps for a while? Um, yeah, I'll probably keep it under wraps. I don't like talking about stuff. I I just because I feel like I jinx myself. Oh, sure, um, I sure. feel like uh like I almost feel like I said something about it in October of 2015 when I was kind of getting close to it, and I feel like it almost jinxed me. So. Yeah, I, I started. I got two things that I want to, two feats that I want to do this year, and I started on one of those uh, a few months ago, and the other one I started on this week or last week. So yeah, there's a couple big things, and and it's not anything that hasn't been done before, but very few people have done them. So sure. uh, they're still pretty exclusive feats. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, you yeah. know the, I have, the go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. No, the go ahead. the the handles on those Denny stones that Brian Hunsacker just lifted are probably still warm. You should put that one on your radar. <laughs> Take a nice little vacation know, over to Scotland. And <laughs> yeah, I would love the vacation to Scotland. I don't know how I'd uh, enjoy the mm-hmm. plane ride because it was bad enough flying out to Texas from uh, Philadelphia or whatever a couple weeks ago. So sure. I gotta I gotta hand it to him for uh just braving the flight over over the ocean. But yeah, that was yeah. pretty impressive. Yeah, that was a really right. impressive feat that he pulled off there, man. Jeez. I I didn't even know that people kept track of that really. And somehow it like like it didn't even register that that's what they were doing at the Arnold this year was they were holding those those Denny stones for time. Didn't even realize it. Yeah, no, that's that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, good for him. That should that should stand for a while. That's some yeah, that's quality stuff. Yeah, yeah. And well, you know what? Somebody got that. He, I think he only trained for that, like prepared for it for like a couple months. So, like, imagine if he put like a lot more time than that into it. He'd probably hold them for like a minute. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Supporting yep. that pure supporting strength on him is is solid. Because remember, didn't he do like uh, like 600 plus or something like that a couple weeks ago in, in the last episode? Didn't we talk about that? Yeah, he pulled some some easy double overhand deadlift with with a hold. Yeah, it was I think it was it was it was 500 plus. Sure, it was like 550 oh. something like that. It was a it was okay. a nice it was a nice lift, but made it look easy. So yeah, right, yep. yeah, good stuff. Yeah, oh. I have to I have to apologize to everybody listening because it's been a couple weeks since we did a show. It's it's entirely on me. A couple a couple weeks ago, I was in Texas for for the FitCon 2017, and um, the, the Big J was putting on. And uh, man, I just I just there wasn't any possible way I was going to be able to do a show with any kind of electricity and magnetism like I usually have. So I was just I was just super drained. So we kind of we kind of just planned on missing that show. And then this past week, this past weekend, I was up getting a uh, uh, fitting for a suit for for Luke's wedding, and man, uh, before I left, my wife was like, "Did you cancel those calls uh, in the afternoon?" I was like, "No, we'll be back in time for that." She's like, "No, you better you better cancel them." So I was like, "I was like, why?" Because I was thinking that you just walk in, they they like measure your arms, get your waist, get your shoulders. You know, marvel at your bicep size, talk about that for a little bit, and then you're out of there. You know, but I did. It took forever, man. It were three dudes, and it took us like three and a half hours or something like that to get to get fitted. So I wasn't even back here until like four four thirty or something like that. So there was no way I could possibly could have gotten the call in. So um, apologize for 
the long delay, but it's pretty much all my fault. So, but we're gonna run through it, man. We got a full list of stuff to cover today, huh, Alan? There is, yeah. There is a ton of things that happened recently. So, <clears throat> well, why don't you go ahead and start it off, tough guy? All right. Well, so the the first thing, and this was this was really exciting to me. So, um, Iron Mind posted, and I don't know if any of the the ladies of our sport have seen this, but they have decided to recognize the Rolling Thunder pull-up records for women. Okay. And pre- and previously this was just this was just a just a guy thing. So mm-hmm. there is right now the the records up for grabs. What they've done is they kind of they kind of structured things similar to how they how they handled the number four um, silver bullet hold record. They have what they're calling a, a world standard. Mm-hmm. Um, so. They've set the world standard at five reps. So for the inaugural record, you would have to hit that minimum plus one rep. So basically six reps. Mm-hmm. And then um, for for body weight with weight attached, it looks like you have to exceed um, 94 kilograms by one. So it'd be be 95 kilograms total weight. So mm-hmm. this is an opportunity for for the ladies out there, you know, Maria and Ashley and and Becca, all the people with these big thick bar numbers to. To get their names on the books, because yeah, right now it's uh, everything is wide open. So good, good opportunity yeah. to first. That's exciting. I didn't notice that. I'm glad you caught that. That's that's pretty cool. I was thinking yeah, yeah. I've got a I've I've got a gift card for Iron Mine, and I was thinking about maybe grabbing another Rolling Thunder so that I could so that I could try that out because right now I have I have two old style Rolling Thunders that I do pull ups on and only one new one. So I was kind of thinking about that. It kind of caught my eye. So, yeah, that's awesome, man. I, I'll tell you, dude, uh, you know who could be good, potentially good at that? Is some of the some of the ladies that competed at the FitCon a couple weeks ago. Especially, I'm thinking like this, uh, that came through. Um, they really had no trouble with the Rolling Thunder. Like, it didn't even phase them. So it would be interesting, and, 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 and they're pretty strong. Like a couple of them did a couple of the other challenges that were going on and uh, very well-rounded uh, fitness levels. So it would be cool to see them get involved too. Yeah, I, I really hope to see some people going after this. You know, it's, and I'm not sure. I didn't see it announced anywhere else. You know, I didn't see it come across on the Facebook thing, so – so hopefully mm-hmm. now they they know it's out there and uh, and right. and get right on it. So yep yep, it's yours yeah. for the taking. Oh sweet, awesome, <clears throat> cool. So, any other Iron Mind news? Yeah, it looks like we had another another guy certified on the red nail. Um, Ooh, name's Matteo Angeline. Hopefully I'm I'm getting that name correct. Let me see if I can. Oh yeah, I'm friends with him on Facebook. Yeah. Oh okay okay all right. Yep. Yeah. That was uh congratulations. Relatively, awesome. Relatively recent thing. So yeah, yep, another guy and I hadn't I hadn't heard that name. I'm not familiar with him, so I don't know what kind of what kind of bending and stuff that he does. But it's yeah. been quite the year for, for red nail search for people. A lot of people getting on that list. So Oh, they're you know, falling like left and right, dude. Yeah, and it you know, it sounds like those things are only getting tougher and tougher from, from what some mm-hmm. people have been saying. You know, it sounds like the the bars are getting a lot harder to bend. So Yeah, they definitely but, are. They definitely are tougher. Oh. Nice. Yeah. Um the uh those those Italian guys, they have their own grip strength group on Facebook. It's uh Grip a Bend Italia. Yep. And yep. it's 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 pretty active. Like there's a lot of dudes in there, man. I would say there's at least twenty members, maybe more. There may be more, but but like I see like t- the same ten names posting quite a bit. So uh I wouldn't doubt it if you're gonna see a bunch more of uh, people from that group with significant feats because there's a lot of good stuff going on in that group. Nice. Yeah, I'm checking that. Trying to check that out right now, actually. They're even coming out with, like, blob replicas and stuff like that. Like, I, really I nice some of that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. They had... They're not yeah. messing around. No, no, that is, it'd, it'd be nice if some of those things could find their way over stateside, because, yeah, they, somebody is doing some really nice work on those things. I saw some of, like, the inch dumbbell picks and stuff, and, yeah, they've got yeah. some they've got some nice toys to play with over there for sure. Yep, yep. 
Did you see the results from David Horn's competition? You know, I I saw that came through. I didn't get a chance to um, I didn't get a chance to go through all the results. So how did that go for him? Well, it was it looked like it was a, a pretty long competition, I guess. Um, but uh, there were some pretty impressive numbers here. I think I have like the records and stuff. David sent me all kinds of information here. Let me see. I mean, they had snapping going on. They they brought out more bar snapping. So um, like Maya Shalchi looked like she really enjoyed herself because she was one of the women that uh, was bending throughout that that uh, online tournament. So uh, let's see. Like the open class results, it was uh, David Horn on top in first place, Ruben Hughes. Uh, and these are all names that we've been talking about for a while. Rob Blair. Uh, I believe Ruben, isn't he the guy that just found out about grip or just started grip here a couple of months ago? Oh, I'm not even, yeah, I'm not even sure, I guess. Yeah, I think, name doesn't, I think he might be, yeah, I think he might be the one. That or uh, it might be somebody else. But, like, some of these guys are just uh, just grip strong from what they've been doing in their manual labor jobs. So, uh, he actually won the 83 kilo class. So, you know he's he's coming in here at the top at the third third spot, and he's only in the 83 kilos. So I mean that's that's pretty impressive. That for the women's Elizabeth Horn uh, at the top, Maya Shalchi in second, Millie Cummings uh, in third. We've talked about her, um, Lucy Horn, Aaron Cummings, and then Sally Horn. So good group of of women there. That are uh, that are engaged with grip as well. So, they the, one of the events they ran was the axle deadlift to the 20 inch mark. I don't know if you've seen that event run before. I have. Yeah, that's a that's a thumbless axle, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it, it is. is. Yeah. Yes, yep. thumbless. Yep. Yeah. Mhm. Mm and then the gold bar. Have you you done any work on the gold bar? I haven't. I've I've seen some guys doing that on on Instagram here and there. Um, but yeah. I, I haven't personally laid my hands on it. So right, right. Then they went into reverse bending, and very strict bending because uh, it's single wraps, and they had to touch in the middle. So it really cuts down on the like the leverage advantage that you can get by having the, the wraps separated. And then uh, Ruben actually won that with a bend of 36.4 degrees. So it looks like they were just uh, measuring the, the degree of bend to see who came out on top. So that's that's a cool way to do it because pretty much everybody was using grade 8s or grade 5s. Uh, so, oh, geez, even Elizabeth Horn got a grade 5 with a slight bend in it. She wobbled a grade 5. Cool. So that's pretty cool. I don't know if I've ever seen a contest that was set up like that where they measured the bends to see where you came out in the standings. That's pretty cool. And, yeah. of course, you know who won the, the half penny left. Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. Jerome Bloom. Jerome, yep. Yeah, Jerome Bloom. Yeah. I see that he also he also had a lift in the last couple of weeks on the moon top that was 81.57 pounds and it was 56% of his body weight. <laughs> Oh yeah, I've seen those. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I I, I love Insane. seeing that. He puts the percentage of his body weight with these lifts now. That is yeah, that is epic. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Lots of events in here, man. They had the two hand pinch hold here, uh, and then they went to uh, braced uh, bar snapping. So uh, I guess they pretty much combined the grip contest with the British uh, st uh, British bending and breaking championships. So. Really cool, really cool. And then David Horn's got all these results on his Facebook wall, so you can check it out and see where people came in. Maybe someone that you've been keeping your eye on overseas, you want to see where they landed in the competition, go to David Horn's page and start scoping it out, brother. What else, Alan? Any more Iron Mind news? No, that was it for that, that I had seen from Iron Mind. What's happening on the grip board, dude? Because... Uh, I've been playing catch up for basically two weeks, so I haven't really been able to keep track of everything. Yeah, we've had a few things come through there recently. You know, uh, Gil Goodman's half 120 hex lift 
just became official. So okay. I don't know how many people are, are on that list, but you had one of those just come through yourself. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Joshua. It looked, like he had like a, it looked like it was a wide one, too. Like, I've got a, I've got a 120 downstairs that's, like, tall and narrow, and I, I don't find it to be much harder to lift than, than the blob. So, um, but his is more of the wider kind, maybe maybe uh, one of the cap dumbbell variety. So mm-hmm. those are those are tough, and they have that slick coating on them. So that's that's a real. Yeah, it might as well have butter on it. Yeah, yeah. I've got mm-hmm. one like that. It's not a 120. It's like a 105, and it's it's glass. Yeah, chalk doesn't even like to do anything with that thing. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Chalk well, gets scared and runs away. Right, right. Yeah. And uh, Josh O'Dell had a 2.5 uh, TNS close up for vote. Yeah. I'm not sure where that's at, but I saw that, that that was up for vote. I don't know that it's yeah. been passed yet. Um, and you had one. You posted it for somebody. I didn't recognize the person, but it was a, it looked like a half hundred hex lift. Um, guy didn't look like he had any trouble lifting it. That's currently up for vote as well. On the um, Man, that may have been uh, Josh O'Dell again. That may have actually been Josh O'Dell. Oh, okay. Was, like, was that okay. the grainy video? Was that the grainy video? Well, I'm not. I'm not sure. I just. I'll have to go back and look there, at that. I, I just didn't recognize well, the guy. I, I would have thought I'd recognize it was Josh O'Dell, but maybe. Yeah. Maybe not. Yeah, I so. think it was Josh O'Dell because you know you do one each week or whatever, every you know a week in between or whatever. So I threw that one up. He sent it to me. So, oh okay. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm pretty sure that was Joshua Dell. I uh, but I don't I don't know, man. It's you know how it is. My memory. <laughs> and um looks like Sean Capusta is is feeling strong on grippers here lately. I saw he just requested MM1 cert. So That's right. Yep. Yep. yep hopefully cat, that man. gets on his yep, on his way to him soon, hopefully, and and we'll see how he does. So I'd seen some of his clothes, it looks like he's got the strength. So so good for him for going yep. after it. Yeah, Sean, if you're listening, make sure your video is good, bro. You don't want to get you don't want to get vetoed on your clothes because of the video cuz I know from experience and that really stinks. So make sure you're practicing getting good quality video. What else, Big Allen? That was pretty much it that I had seen in specific grip board news. Um Wade Gillingham had just posted on there Though uh, it looks like uh, a guy from Japan had just closed the the GHP seven for two reps. It looks like his name is uh, Katsuya Kawasaki. Hmm. That was a, a, a recent entry on there. So, so one more person on that list. Sounds like mm-hmm. we're getting to yeah. see some more people from over there closing them. So good, awesome. Yeah, they probably got like a thousand a thousand dudes that come in and train their butts off like every week and. We just haven't seen the videos yet because of YouTube's algorithms and stuff like that. It'd be interesting <laughs> to find out more about that because uh, a lot of times, you know, a lot of times when they, when the when the people that I have come across that are like of Asian, you know, heritage, you know, I have no idea what they possibly could be writing in the description. It's it's all the you know their native language. So who knows? I mean, it could be saying, like, epic turnout for our grip gathering this weekend. 50 dudes came in and smashed the three and bent red nails or something like that. You know what I mean? Right, so, right. Yeah. <laughs> you just never know. They're probably, like, uh, you know, talking smack on me or something like that. <laughs> the, the, uh, you know, sometimes I can discern what the heck, uh, they're talking about in like you know the Italian group and um, naturally Spanish. I can figure it out, but like when it comes to the to the languages that are that don't even use our letters or like use the variations like like the Russian scripts, no idea what the heck could possibly be going on there. Probably excellent advice that I could be learning from and uh, can't even decipher it. So yeah. So did you see the results from uh, Aaron Corcoran's? Competition? I didn't. No, I didn't. I was just gonna get on the board and and see what happened because yeah. uh, I still hadn't seen anything. I did see that uh, Tanner had a day. The oh, Tanner. Geez. Did he ever? Yeah, boy, set the record. 
on the on the two inch FPVC crusher. That was and that cool. looked like that looked like he had more in him. Oh, I know it. I know it. Yeah, he 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 beat the old one by five pounds. So yeah, that's, that's that's nice. I mean, that's he's in he's in solid territory there too. Did you see that <laughs> Phil Koshaba's uh, gripper close? Yeah, I did. did a one, yep, yep. one seventy nine pound. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my dude. God, that guy. <laughs> yeah, he, oh, uh, I'm looking at it right now. He beat Aaron. He actually beat Aaron on that. Yeah, that is insane. Oh. He needs to he needs to get on that climb on that mash monster mash monster ladder already. He's he could be well up there. I mean that is some. Oh yeah, he's got some he's, solid. He's strength. gonna he's gonna smash the the one and two no problem if he's when he's if he's belting out one seventy nines on a regular basis. MM one and two are just a formality for him. He might even be able to hit the number three real hard. <laughs> Yeah, you know, because that was that's a pretty substantial jump over what he had done at the at the Southern Squeeze. You know, he had a 169 pound one there. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not sure any of other attempts he might have taken at that at that competition. You know, but that's a mm-hmm. that's a pretty good that's a pretty good move in a short period of time. Right. So definitely yeah. put the strength on. Yeah. It. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. For sure. For sure. Uh, let's see. And then I saw that Tanner uh, did a did a clean. Face lifted the blob by the face and cleaned it, which yeah. uh, he he. So basically, he might have one of the. He's got one of the hardest fat man blobs that's in existence, because I couldn't even lift it by the face when I was in Texas. He brought it over, and then I saw um, Morgan Choi repeatedly clean it by the fa- face. He lifted it repeatedly, and then I saw him go left and right in, in rapid succession by the face. So, um, you know, so the point I'm trying to make is Tanner's been working on one of the hardest blobs in existence. So once he got to whatever the blob was that he was using, you know, after that contest, that's a little bit more seasoned, has a little bit better texture to it. It wasn't even, it wasn't even a challenge for him. Yeah, no, the, the the sky is the limit for that guy. That is just amazing. I went down and repainted all my blobs with uh, the the slipperiest paint that I could find, and uh, I'm I, I'm just going to train on those from now on. Yeah, boy, do you believe that? <laughs> do you think I did that? You know, <laughs> look out at look out at nationals for these guys. You know, my gosh. Yeah. I, I tell you, yeah, they're going to be giving some of the the heavier the heavier competitors a real run for their money, pulling the kind of numbers that this, they're doing. Yes, absolutely. This year is going to be a year like no other because the the weight class differential is not going to be as big of a factor uh, by any means. By any means, Mm-mm. yeah, it's going to be a totally different situation, and it could just. Uh, I mean. It could come down to familiarity with the equipment, you know, stuff like that. If you don't have, I'll tell you, if you don't have a two-hand pinch device, you better get one quick and get working on it because uh, that experience is going to come in very, very handy. If I could use the greatest pun in history, it's going to come in (laughs) real handy to get some experience on all of the equipment. So, yeah. Right, right. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, and you know some of those numbers didn't look too bad. I don't have them right in front of me, but those guys pulled some, some real respectable two hand pinch numbers. So the one thing I haven't seen out of them yet is 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 axle numbers. But I've got to think. I mean, you're pulling, you know, you're pulling 107 and a half k on the on the two inch crush. You got to have a monster axle. You know that is just yeah, that is yeah. Lovely. I would I would I would think so. As long. You know, uh, I think maybe an asterisk to go there would be how is your form, how is your full body strength. If you have good, respectable full body strength and balance there and your back is healthy, then they're probably going to pull big numbers. If they're not good deadlifters or if they uh, if they don't have a lot of time, you know, training the deadlift under their belt, then maybe that could end up uh, hampering how they perform. But, right. yeah, you, right. you would think if, if with Tanner pulling – 107.5 kilos on the two inch that that would correlate to some pretty darn good numbers on the axle, but 
we're just going to have to wait and see what happens. Yeah, I'm I'm really anxious about that because you know, you look at that, you know, I mean, you you, you double that number. I know you can't necessarily do that, but if you were double that number, mm-hmm. you know, you're talking about this guy pulling way over two and a half times his body weight on an axle. Yeah, that's uh that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. He's, you know, he's like the international man of mystery. So he he only puts out like you know a few videos in a drip feed every so often. So we just don't know. We're probably not right. Gonna, we're probably just gonna have to use our imagination as we continue to get closer because I don't see him putting out regular videos of his axle stuff. So he's probably gonna make that a question mark going right into the event, knowing him. Yep. Yep. Be a little teaser. Yeah. Nice. Yep. Oh. Yeah, dude. Hey, real quick, while we're talking about grip contests, I just want to let everybody know that we are running a grip challenge at the Man Show in Syracuse this Friday night starting at 7 o'clock. And I think what we're going to do is the same exact three events that we did. It's going to be Rolling Thunder for reps as many as possible inside of 60 seconds. Then it's going to be uh, the Bullring 4-inch uh, hub lift. For max, using uh, the rounds system, so we're going to add two and a half pounds on each after each attempt, and we just lift for your max, and then finally a hold for time with the pinch, pinch block. So real easy events, not a lot of uh, technique required. The feedback was real good. I could tell that the people that are, you know, that are real that were really interested in training down to Texas liked grip a lot. And I've been talking with a couple of them about getting more involved. So uh, I, I can't wait to have more people from the Syracuse area come up and try it out, too. So I hope people are listening to this and can make some plans to come up Friday night. Awesome. Yeah. That's part of a big, you know, the man show is like, I think it's like um, you can go and look at guns and four-wheelers and probably like, you know, other other outdoorsy type things, uh, big trucks, stuff like that. So there could potentially be some really tough dudes walking around there. Um, but also, I mean, we're running a women's uh, category as well. So just because it's the man show, I didn't name it. So I don't, I don't know what the history of this event is, but I'm sure women are going to be walking around there that uh, will want to get their hands on the these devices as well. So the more the merrier. Yeah, yeah. Well, that would be a sweet opportunity for for having a couple of rolling thunders. Get the ladies going on it that way. Yeah. Yep. yep. Well, that's nice. true. Yeah. 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 Sweet. Okay. Yeah. You know, Jared Goga. I don't know if you if you caught it. He just posted on his YouTube. He's got a a little grip together. He's doing it at his place coming up on on April 29th. It sounds like for anybody yeah. that that isn't aware and, and isn't subscribed to his channel. It's look up old rusty stuff. It sounds like he's got some details, more details listed there, but this is something he, he does on a fairly regular basis. seems like he always has a pretty good turnout, you know, usually about a half a dozen guys or so. You know, he's yeah. doing a good job yeah. out there. So always looks yeah. like a lot of fun. seems like it's a, almost a full day event. The guys have a good time, lift a bunch of different stuff. So I wish yeah. I was out that way to, to hang once in a while. Well, you know what? They, they should start doing that in uh, out in Wisconsin. Somebody should yep, step yep. up and I know, uh, I know. start having people over their house. You know. Yep. Yep. Somebody should do it. I don't know. I I might. There must be somebody listening to the show from Wisconsin that could possibly put together a little grip together. You know. I'm trying to work out. You know, we had uh, we had talked about that, uh, uh, that William Norwood a while back. I actually yeah. messaged him recently. And, um, oh boy! Yeah, I, I passed him on the information about King Kong. He sounded interested. I haven't uh, haven't heard anything back from him since then. But um, wow. anyway, yeah, hoping got my fingers crossed. So I, you know, I, I I think it's something he'd do really good at based on on what I had heard on his mm-hmm. stuff at the at the Arnold. So anyway, yeah, something something yeah, out he, there anyway. He, so. He's he's the guy that was literally throwing stuff around at the Arnold at the the grip challenge at the concrete booth, right? Yeah, yep, yep. Well, yep, making everything look easy. Yep. Mm-hmm. Cool. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Then you get in there and you just school them. You just totally school them <laughs> on everything. You just scare them away. 
you know, that's yeah. that's the other thing. That's the other thing that everybody needs to do. We need to take a lesson from the movie Fight Club. You need to get somebody in there into your gym, in your little uh, dungeon gym or whatever. You get down there, you challenge them to a grip challenge, and then you lose. That's what you got to do. You got to get them into your house, and then you lose to them. That's the secret. And then they experience the adrenaline rush of whooping someone's ass that's been involved in grip for so long, and then it just keeps bringing them back, gets them pumped up about it. Then the next thing you know, they're buying their own collection of grippers. They're picking up Napalm Pinch. They're picking up Rolling Thunders. They're getting a bunch of block weights off eBay, and they're hooked on grip, brother. Yeah, yep, yep. That's a good idea. I should, yeah, I should do that. Be easy yeah, with him, it sounds like. Yeah, well, awesome. Yep. What else is going on? What else has been going on in, in the world of grip, Alan? What have you seen, dude? Well, it, it looks like y- about you and I are the only ones that aren't doing any, any chin-ups with the flask here lately. I you caught right. some of those videos. <laughs> Boy, yeah. Where are we at with this? You know, I see, you know, Gil Goodman put up a pretty sweet pretty sweet flask riff. I even saw um, Luke Raymond. Looks like he whipped up a, a nice-looking little replica. Just about hit one, and then uh, dude, he's got skills. He's got skills, yeah, bro. He's, yep. Man, he's so good at that. Yeah. But then, but then Cody Burns comes along, and 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 he just reps it out. You know, he hits like what, what four reps on the flask? Four, yeah, so, and just about got five. Yeah. 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 Yep. So he wasn't screwing around. So. And Gil yeah. gets uh, Gil gets uh, um. Oh shoot! What is the word? English is my second language. Sometimes, what is it when you make a mistake and you almost like break your neck falling down or whatever? It's not a fumble. Fumble. Blooper. It's a blooper. He's blooper. got blooper oh, yeah. of the year. Grip blooper of the year with the with the slipping off the flask pull up. Man, <laughs> he just about bit it. Man, didn't it? I was like, oh, oh, oh. It would, what would have been great is if he would have grabbed like a razor blade and just put like a nick in the back of his head. And like uh, did like a Valsalva maneuver, and the blood would have started rushing. That's the only way he could have improved on that blooper video, brother. Yeah, yeah. No, I I saw that. Yeah, you don't want to ring your bell on those on those uprights in there. You need some of those like pads that they put on, you know, at the bottom of field, or, uh, you know, field goals and stuff like that. Protect yourself. That's the sort of thing that yeah. happened to me. I'd take a pull and I'd, I'd crash and burn, and it'd be it'd be pretty epic. You know? Yeah, no, well, what would happen to me is, you know, I'd have a toe strap up there that's rated at like a 1,000 pounds, and I would actually get some momentum coming off the floor, and the stupid toe strap would break, or the carabiner that's rated for 6 billion pounds would end up bending or something. That would be my luck. Some freak crazy incident would happen. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, always in the worst way. Yeah. Dude, oh, you seen yeah. anything? Anybody recommend any movies? Any any grip feats for movies? I, I haven't. I haven't seen any. I, I haven't that either. One, um, that the that that Tom Cruise clip that was hysterical. Of yeah. All that um that epic rock climbing stuff. So yeah, yeah. I would think yeah. that you know, you guys like Gil and 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 Tanner Merkel, they could appreciate some of that. So sure. That was that was yeah. pretty sweet. Yeah. Well, they probably don't think that's out of the ordinary because they probably saved the, their own lives with their grip strength in the past. So they just laugh at that, like, uh, you know, oh yeah, that's that's you got to be ready to do that every time you're out on a ledge or whatever, you know. Right. But, right. Uh, yeah. So they just they don't care, but you know, there's got. I know there's some movie buffs listening to these shows. You know, there's some movie buffs that know some good grip feats that are taking place in movies, and they're just not telling us. They're 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 holding them hostage from us, Alan. Yep, yep. Making us work for it. Part thumbless inch lifts that you caught. I know there was somebody that put up a thumbless inch lift, and I didn't catch his name. Did you see who it was? It was some dude that we haven't really heard of. You know, there was actually um, I. I on the grip board, and I think the post, I think the post got taken down. Um, mm-hmm. His he had a username. It's it's I would call it my war. It's M M Y W O R, and this mm-hmm. guy, 
it, it looked like he posted it himself as a as a as a seat judging, I and mean, he probably just didn't understand the rules. I'm sure, but he posted a, yeah. a thumbless inch lift, and then he also had a, a, a look like a 20 kilogram plate pinch, um, separate lift, but but same same video, same feet judging. So yeah, I have no idea who he is, um, but yeah. it was a real strong lift. Um, okay, but that was I knew I saw I it, but I couldn't I couldn't find it, and I couldn't I couldn't dig the name out, so. Yeah, yep. No, and that was the only one that I had that I had caught. So Yeah. But I've but had yeah, a couple no, more where I get it I get it like mid shin, but I, I just can't I can't get it to my knee, it slips out. It's too hard. Too hard for me. Well it'll get there. You got those other things. That's just a it's just a matter of time. Huh. Yeah. I can't wait to see that one. That's right. That's what I need to remember right there. Thank you for the confidence, Alan. I appreciate it. You got my yeah. back, dude. Yeah. I got a I got a quote of the week kind of kind of follows that theme here. Ooh, um, says, quote of the week. Let's hear it. So, how long you can continue to be good at something is how much you believe in yourself, and how much hard work you do with the training. Mmm, that's Jason true, man. Statham. That's a good one. Jason Statham. Ooh, you yeah. know. He was at the he was at the Sornex booth in I believe 2014. I know my friend uh, JT and uh, I, I'm wondering what he might have tried at the booth. That would have been cool to see. I was not there that year, but I know that he stopped by and uh, was mingling there. So maybe oh. if someone listening was there and witnessed it, maybe they could tell us if he was able to pull off any any cool grip feats. Nice, nice. I, I I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I like watching his movies. I think he's a real good actor. So does a good job yeah. as a bad guy too. Yeah, yep. Yeah, cool. plays the heel, man. Everybody's a yep. good, some. Sometimes people are good heels, bro. I I, <laughs> I heard an interview with uh, Randy Orton the other day, and he had to play babyface at uh, WrestleMania, which is the good guy. And he said, "I'm not doing it. I'm going to play heel. It's it's funner to play heel." So like, I mean, they cheered him and everything like that. He was cheered as a good guy, but. It's more fun for him to play the heel, so he was still scowling and he was still doing like dastardly things and stuff like that. But man, I just love listening to wrestlers talk about grip. Imagine if they could hear me talking about or uh, wrestlers talking about wrestling. Imagine if they heard me talking about grip, right? They'd probably convert. They'd probably want to come over and do some training here at the house. You know what I mean? Just imagine. Right, I bet right. they'd be getting pumped. Pumped. What yeah. else, Alan? What else you got for me? So did you see this? This was the first time I'd seen this. Um, you see Gil Goodman's midair transfer of the anvil by the horn. I did not. St- how did I miss that, dude? I, dude, the the traveling and everything is killing me because I'm not able to get my my constant like IV of grip feats on Instagram. So I totally missed that. So let's hear oh, about it. Tell me about it. It was sweet. Let me try to let me try to bring that one up right now here. I think it was. Um, what was it exactly? I think he's got a 128 pound anvil. So, yep, it looked like he he went for the went for the pick with the just watching it here. Yep, left hand popped it up and and caught it with the right. Wow, pretty nice. No. I'd, I'd never seen that done. Yeah, he even puts it in slow mo, and that's yeah ah. yeah. Yep, it, it's not that's like cool. the, you know his his one hand was definitely nowhere near the other when he when he made that transfer. So that's a that's a solid lift. Yeah. Oh respect. So he didn't just like pull it and then it went right into the other hand. There was some good space between the hands. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You can really nice. appreciate it in the slow mo. Yep. Yep. Yeah. He's got yeah. skills. So that that is so awesome. You know, things get so easy for people. They got to come up with this new stuff that nobody's thought of before. Mm-hmm. That is that is great. Yeah. Yep. I'd like to see what he can do on this anvil that I've got at the house right now from the Twana Iron Metal Scrapyard, man, because it is brutal. It is just a brutal anvil. Oh, that's the one that's got that that's got that really fat fat base on it, doesn't it? Doesn't it kind of yeah, the, it kind of taper out yeah, really the, quick? That's right. Yeah, it goes. It's it's only like maybe four inches or something like that. Four inches in length. But the base oh, yeah. is maybe like three inches, so it's 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 very conish. And it, it it comes to a point very abruptly, so it's it's really tough, really tough. 
Awesome. My man, uh, I saw I saw Yuha put up a video with a sick, some sick work on the on the inch dumbbell with uh, a towel on it. Did you see that one, big boy? I did. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that was almost a high pull. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, man. Yeah. So he might be gunning. He might be gunning for the for the inch dumbbell clean again. I know he was working on that back in like 2015. So maybe he's putting a little emphasis on that with his non gripper hand because he, you know, he he does uh, he specializes things by hand. So like the inch dumbbell hand is his left hand. So a lot of times you'll see that he does like you know a video where it's all kinds of pulls on the inch dumbbell left handed, maybe even throw weight on there or you know grease his hand up with some kind of motor oil or something like that. And then, you know, in the same video, he's closing big old grippers with his right hand. So that has to do with his, his specialization techniques per hand. So, um, and oh, I think his what? right hand is his, is his pinch hand. I never made that connection, actually. That's, mm-hmm. okay. Nice. All yeah. right. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay better attention to that, I guess. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah. So... Yeah, and then I haven't heard from him, so I haven't heard, don't know how he's feeling or, you know, he had that rhabdo episode and then some other stuff that came about from it. So hopefully he's feeling good and good spirits and maybe he's just taking, it off, taking some time off from the Internet, which I can't blame him for that either. So hope he's feeling good. Yeah, right, right, yeah. I'd like to see some more stuff out of him. I hope he, hope he stays after that, that MM7 cert he was working after, so. Yeah. Yeah, I hope he hope he can get back on that because I I think he wants that real bad. So in fact, I know right. he does. So, did you see the Hub Marine handwich? No, no. Tell me about. Oh, that's that big. That's that big hub plate, right? That the James Fuller yeah. picked up. Is that? Yeah, man. He's. Uh, I don't even know what the weight of it was. I think I got a picture here, man. I, I downloaded everything today. But I didn't uh, internalize exactly what the plate was. And darn it, it's a York, so it probably doesn't even say what the what the weight is. Yeah, it doesn't even say. But it's in like immaculate condition, dude. It's uh, but I I I don't know. For some reason, Hub Marine Sandwich came to me, and then I was like, well, actually, it should be Hub Marine Handwich. But this is a. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll throw a picture up. It's it's uh it's much wider than a regular. Uh, old style York hub, and he's actually got the dates. Like I don't know the dates by uh, by heart, but if you talk to James, he can tell you like what uh, the decades that this plate was manufactured in. Mm-hmm. And this hub is much wider. You'll see it in the video, and uh, he's able to break it off the ground. I, I don't know if he ended up lifting it all the way to lockout or not, but he he was able to break it off the ground. This this work that he's been doing on hubs, man, has really paid off. I would oh, yeah. I would love to see him. I would love to see him pull on uh, the the shallow hub from the the world of grip and see what he can do on that too. Right, right, yeah. No, he's definitely got some got some monstrous monstrous hub numbers out there. Yeah, that's that's great stuff. Even that I haven't seen what kind of what kind of iron mine hub lift has he got? That must be just gigantic by now because he was pulling. I I don't know that he has one. I, I'm not sure. Oh boy! I'm not sure. Okay. All all the well, training that I've that. seen him doing, yeah, all the training I've seen him doing is on the plates. So I bet he's I bet he's real strong on the Iron Mine hub too. Oh, I just don't think he strong. has one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. weird, weird. Well, that's great. I can't I yeah. can't believe he doesn't have one. That's amazing. You know he yeah. with yeah. all the other stuff he should well, he, he should make an ebook about how to score all this sweet gear because he's always getting so, like different plates and stuff and all this stuff. It's just, yeah, man, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. You know, he, I never. Th- I think he carries. I think he carries most of it around in that in that car. <laughs> right. Whenever he you comes know, down here, dude, that car is like a tank. I forget what it is, man. But like, if you want a, re- a a resilient car, get what he drives because that thing has been through like trips to Georgia and trips to Texas and it's probably taking it up to Canada. Um, I mean, the dude is all over the place going to get this stuff. Yeah, no, I well maybe that's maybe that's my issue is I don't travel enough to try to track this stuff down. I gotta, I guess I gotta broaden my horizons there. I'm kind of just limiting to local play it against sports and stuff like that. I need to 
yeah. think outside the box a little. Because yeah. geez, you know, a lot of that stuff's so hard to find. Even a decent, a decent hubbing plate is is it's slim pickings around here, you know. And yeah, I get hear you. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. Right. So, right. Cool. And he's got like yeah. eighteen different kinds of them. Jeez, oh, I know it. I know it. Yeah, I'll have to pick his brain on that at some point. <laughs> Figure out how he's getting yeah, dude. the lowdown on all that. Yep. You know, another dude that put up a very impressive um, hub lift was James Rodriguez from a, from a couple weeks ago. Did you see the one that he did? It, was, it wasn't a York plate. It was like uh, the Olympic standard plate or whatever. I'm not sure. I don't have it in front of me. But it's, it's more of like your conventional plate with the shallow profile, and it's, you know, it's maybe like the, the three-quarter of an inch high hub, and he was able to hub that. You oh, don't nice. don't see that very often. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, you don't. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. That's yep. cool. You don't see that very often. Yeah, I think I did catch that lift. Yeah. No, he's definitely been working on his working on his pinch and stuff a lot lately, too. So, mm-hmm. yeah, good for him. Yeah, the hub, yep. that's a lift I, I really love. I love seeing guys nailing that. So, yeah, good mm-hmm. for him. Yeah, buddy, for sure. I got a I got a a glance at the Living Legends DVD. Another glance. Uh, they they've done more work on that, and uh, it looks like that thing is just about ready. And uh, in I would say probably in the next month or so they'll be they'll be getting sent out, dude. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, I can't I yeah, can't wait. Man. It sounded like it was getting closer to completion. So good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they actually added a couple other things to it. I don't want to put out too much information just to, you know, maintain the surprise. But they've put a couple other extra features on there, and I think I think it's going to be a really nice collector's item. Cool, cool. Was this a, was that a limited run? I didn't hear. I know we did a kind of a pre-order thing, but um, you know, I hadn't heard. Was he having some extra ones whipped up in case some other people wanted them, or is it literally just the people yes. that got in on the initial? Okay, so there's going to be some extras. All right, cool. cool. Yeah, there's going to be some extras made, and people will be able to get them. Um, because there was some trouble getting the process going, we took it off the market just so uh, a couple a couple of people were, they voiced their, their concerns with how long it was taking. So we just didn't want to have any more trouble around that, so we took it off the market. But it can be put back on you know, at, at, uh, at any time. So it'll be, it'll be made available. Yeah. Sure. Cool. Cool. Well, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, man. Yeah. It'll be coming soon. All right. So what, what else, else is going on? Oh, did we, you um... see your, your brother, Dan Fleming, he put up a video. Did you see the pistol that he did? And then he was pinching two twenty fives in each hand. Oh, I, you know what? I got. I think I got a glimpse of that actually. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I don't remember much about it, but yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. So yeah. now he's combining his his grip stuff with body weight feats that none of us can do. Right. So, right. Yeah. This, this is the kind of guy that we're dealing with. You know what I mean? This is the kind of guy we're dealing with, showing off. You know, it's it's just not the good attitude to have. That's not the welcoming attitude. So hopefully, when he has his grip together up there at his place, you know, uh, he's not challenging people to that because that's a tough one, dude. That's a tough one. Right, right. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> what would what would you, what what if he would like? Uh, what if someone came into his tattoo shop and said, "Yeah, I want like a unicorn." with uh, a rainbow and put the sun on there and stuff like that. And, like, they they roll over, and I want it right in between my shoulder blades. And then he gets to work, right? And, like, four hours later, he's got, like, an anvil on there, a couple grippers, uh, you know, big York plate or something like that. Could you imagine that, dude? What, oh, that would be hilarious. What would the guy say when he – yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it looks great. It looks great. And then, uh, oh, well, where's the mirror so I can see it? Oh, no, the mirror is broken. I broke it earlier, so you won't be able to see it. And they don't even get a look at it until they get home. That would be yeah. awesome. That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. He's got to film like that the, when he does it. Yeah, it'd be like the Cannon Power Works sugar skull on his back, so it's like this big advertisement the guy doesn't even know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Sweet. 
or he yeah. or he just starts doing his own like self portraits on people's backs and you know on people's like uh, IT bands and stuff like that. Just a bunch of people walking around with Dan Fleming's all over their body. <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm surprised nobody's hit him up about bringing his gear down to SJ4 and do like SJ4 tattoo booth or something like that. Really make it make it a memorable thing. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, that's style. cool. Yeah, yeah. that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. That's he should he should think about doing that, dude. He should. I bet he could bring that on the plane. What, what are they gonna yeah, say, right. dude? What are they gonna say? He'll just reach out, shake their hand, break a couple bones, and they'll be like, take it on, sir. Just take it right on. Go ahead. Yep, yep. Awesome. All right, enough joking, Alan. What you got for me, dude? What you got for me? All right, so looking at um, another another post from Gil Goodman. You must have caught this one. So Tanner Merkel had a, a monstrous uh, tips tester lift, two-hand tips tester. It looks like. 370.7 pounds, just over oh. the body weight. Yeah, dude. Holy cow. Unbelievable. Oh. Yeah. Yep. I'll tell you what, man. I, I, Tanner is obviously a strong dude, but let me tell you, man, he's a nice guy too. Oh, sure. Down, yep. He came down to FitCon, and – um, he said he would be there when it started, which he wasn't there. So, you know, obviously, you know, he's got a little trouble with being there on time. But when he got there, he was all nice. He came over. He introduced himself. He goes, he goes, Jed, I even brought something for you. I was like, wow. You know, and I'm standing there. I'm touched. You know what I mean? The guy brought me a gift. You know, I'm away from my family and stuff like that. He brought me a gift. So he reaches into my into his pocket. And he knows that I'm looking. I'm in anticipation of what this awesome gift could be. And bam, hits me with the scope, dude. <laughs> you know what the you know the scope, right? You know the yep. scope, the circle that you make, yeah, with your thumb and index finger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what he doesn't know is, what he doesn't know is, I am the scope champion of Tawanda Area High School, Tawanda Area Middle School and Y Sox Elementary Joint School, dude. <laughs> all three. All three, dude. For 12, 13 years, I'm the champion of this entire entire county, basically. And and I'm like, whoa! And I'm like slow motion in my mind, but it was, it was probably like speed of light broke it poked my hand back through underneath the back, pulled it through like a knitting needle, and totally, totally wrecked his plan of scopal domination at the FitCon. It was all over from there, bro. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's funny. He thought to bring that, though. That's great, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. He even warned me, and I didn't pick up on it because there was a post on Instagram where he's like, yeah, I've got something for you when I see you at FitCon on Saturday, buddy. I was like, oh, that's awesome, dude. That's that's great. And then I kind of forgot about it. And, you know, he thought he was going to catch me unawares, as Lord Alfred Hayes used to say. And little did he know that I've got multiple championships of scope. All right. Go ahead, Alan. I keep walking all over you. I keep interrupting your train of thought, and you can't get any momentum to get through the feats list that you've got. I apologize, brother. Now it's your no, turn, um, dude. Just one thing that's off the, the feet topic, just so everybody has a chance to see it, uh, Eric Rusin created a page, the, the Canada Grip Sport page. So everybody mm. should check that out and, and like it. Make sure to spread the word in case they haven't yes. seen that yet. Just a quick Great. shout out for them here. So, yeah, right. good job, good job. I'll also remind everybody to like this video. We haven't talked about that. Go ahead and like this video. That What that does, guys, YouTube takes into consideration how many likes a video gets, and it will actually help to propagate the video across the entire YouTube platform based on the likes because it shows engagement. It shows basically contentment with the viewership of the video. So the more likes the video gets, it actually helps it be shown to more people. So go ahead and like the video, and uh, don't be afraid to share it. And then also, what's our hashtag, Alan? This Week in Grip. 
This Week in Grip. That's right. Use it on your favorite social platform. Okay, back to you, Alan. All right. So Nick Rosendahl posted a, a blob clean. Did you see that? No, I didn't. When was that? When was that? That dude? was that was just just this past week. He posted that, and he also oh. had it was a it was a solid solid clean. I'm looking at it right now. Um, yep, bang, clean and press. Yep, nice, Very easy, nice. Yep, that's and awesome, he had, dude. Um, he had a he, apparently he has a, a Gracie Bell in his possession, mm-hmm. and um, looks like 146 pounders. So he had to lift with a hold of that. I'm not real familiar about the, the history of the Gracie Bell. I don't know that there's that, that many of those around. You know what, Chris Rice has one. It looks like, you know, Nick's got one, of course. But those are about right. the only two that I've heard that, that, that the people got. So I don't know yes. how that how that plays into the baby inch thing. I know that I imagine the baby inch came afterwards. But um, Oh, man, yeah. Yeah, I just don't know the history uh, of that bell. Oh, boy. So I'm, it might come to me. Let me Let me just think a little bit. So the dude that made them, his daughter's name is Gracie. And ah. so he named the dumbbells after his daughter. If you go back to the old Grip Strength Radio uh, recordings that Doc and I used to do, we talk about it. And I cannot remember the guy's name that produced those. He also was producing... Uh, an American version of the Vulcan Gripper called the Death Grip, Gripper or something like that, Vulcan Death Grip or something. Um, oh. Darn, I cannot remember his name. I'm going to have to get back to you on that one, Alan, and we can talk about that in the next episode. So these are these are original bells, though. These are something that were that were made in the states, and this isn't a replica based off of something. This is this is from that. Film, no. Huh? He, he, you know what those are, dude? Those are basically giant shots, um, shot balls, and uh, they were just welded with the, you know, they were connected to handles, and they made, um, you know, inch-like dumbbells out of them. Oh, wow. But they're, wow. Th- yeah, the, the spheres are actually, you know, um, th- I believe they were used in demolition or something like that. Uh, I know that you can take giant shot balls and, uh, you know, the cement mixing trucks that uh, they have either cement or concrete or whatever inside of them, you know what I mean? And you'll see them going yeah. down the road and the big the big tank on the back is turning, right? So yep. what that's doing, it's turning to keep that mixed up because concrete only has a certain amount of time before it starts to harden. Right. So um, those trucks eventually get all caked up on the inside because not all of that mixture ends up coming out when they get to the place where they're delivering. So uh, in order to clean that out, they will put giant shots inside of there and roll, you know, actually activate that, that barrel so that the shots will then go in there and break all of that um, caked on concrete off of the inside of that barrel. So um, I think the shots that they used, the spheres that they used, were those kinds of shots. Don't hold it to me. Like, don't go to, you know, court and talk about talk about it as a as a 100% fact. But I believe that's where they came from. If not, oh, wow. then they came from somewhere else. But yeah, they were not cast or anything like that into a into the Gracie Bells. They were uh, actually affixed in, onto the handles. Yeah. Cool. That's that's great. Okay. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna try mm-hmm. to source a couple of those bad boys. Those look like some pretty nice bells. So, okay. Yeah. Sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I always yeah. wondered about that. Possibly. Yeah, buddy. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those things that I just can't remember. I I want to say that his name starts with H, and it was like, it was like, uh, man, I don't know. Man, I can't remember. I just can't remember. Darn it. Memory like a steel trap that's all rusty and doesn't work anymore, brother. <laughs> sure. I'm searching my email to see if I can find that name. Ooh, man. Hmm. Man, it's just not going to come up. I will find it. I will eventually find it, but I, it's not going to come up right now. All right. You know who well, would know is uh, Chris Rice would know. I'll ask Chris Rice. Oh, okay. 
Cool. Yeah, I'd be curious about that. I was, I, I, I'd, I'd yep. always wondered about that. I'd only ever heard of the one that, that Chris Rice had. So yeah, that was mm-hmm. that was neat getting that little bit of history on those. Awesome. Yeah, there were two or three made, and I, I don't remember all the people that had them. But yeah, well, congratulations to Nick for the feats because, you know, and I'm willing to bet that he probably wasn't even training those things too hard, buddy. He like the most the majority of his grip training that takes place is for from his strongman event work. So probably he's doing a lot of farmers, doing a lot of axles, and he's done nothing but get stronger the last couple of years on those lifts. So I think probably it's he's just seeing some good carryover from what he has been doing for strongman, and he probably just, pro, I, I I don't know for a fact, but he probably wasn't doing too much dedicated work on those, and they just happened. So congratulations. Sure. Nice. No, that's that's great. If people can, yeah, put that stuff down and just get right back to it. <laughs> good for yeah. them. That's maybe yep. that's maybe that's the answer. <laughs> Might be a plateau buster for some things. So. <laughs> right. Cool. Right. Stop doing it and come back to it. Yeah, that's the yeah. secret. <laughs> yeah. Did you see the the? I think it's called a hack lift, a hack uh, deadlift that Ode Haugen did. No. He put it up on his, I believe it was his Instagram that he put it up on, and I'm trying to find it. I, I, I was trying to find it earlier, and I couldn't find it again. I, I've got the footage, but it doesn't say it doesn't say what he was doing in the video as far as the weight. But um, after he did it, then Shogun of Grip, uh, Dustin McFarlane, also gave it a try. Are you familiar with Dustin? No, I'm not. No. Yeah, Shogun so of he Grip, got, is that uh, an Instagram handle? That's right, yeah. Shogun of Grip and... Uh, okay. Each word is separated with an underscore. All right. Uh, he's a smaller dude. He's in the 83 kilo class, and he did a 316 double overhand behind the back deadlift, and then he actually uh, hashtagged us this week in grip. That's how That's I saw sweet. it. Yeah. So. Just hit follow. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, yeah, give him some followers. He he doesn't put out like videos all the time. But the stuff that he does is is huge, uh grip strength related. So he's got he's got all the tools, man. He hasn't, uh, you know, he's been he's been collecting for a while. He hasn't shied away from uh, picking stuff up. So he's he's got a good collection. And uh, I'm trying to think of where he's located. He's out in the northwest somewhere. Maybe uh, he might be Oregon or uh, Washington. I can't quite remember, but. Um, Let's see. So I found uh, I found Ode's video. So he's got two blues. These are the uh, kilogram plates. Two blues. He's got a red and he's got a yellow. So 20, 40, 65, 80 kilos on each side. So 160 kilos plus the bar. That's another 15 kilos. 175 kilos potentially here on this lift. So how many uh, pounds is that? Ready, go. Uh, 385. Oh, you got me. I was I was close. I was close to doing it, but I hit plus instead of times for the conversion <laughs> factor. So what was it? 385. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I think he put it up, and then uh, then Dustin wanted to give her a try. So that's how it went. Awesome. All right. And then Mr. Big Hands there, Mr. Uh, Wide Pinch, Thomas Larson. Did you see that he smoked a 3.5 gripper over the last couple of weeks? No, I didn't. I must have missed that one. I, I saw some yeah. some other ones of his lists here. He said, yeah, he got a lot of stuff happening lately. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Let's see. Let me bring him up right now. I caught some. I thought he had some, some wider block weight lifts. He was hitting a bunch of stuff here recently. What yeah. did he called the he called the one that had a different no oh, that's not it I can't remember what he what he referred to it as it was some oh really some different kind of block oh the 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 Russian brick it was the, the Russian brick eighty millimeter pinch block aka the Russian brick yep hit um, one hundred and six point six kilograms on that oh yeah. Yeah, I don't know much about that I'm not sure I may have I may I, it seems like I I might have read that I might have seen that. Uh, but mm-hmm. I, I don't rem- I don't recall too much about it. Yeah, no, that's 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 
a little over three inches wide, so that's a pretty fat, pretty fat pinch there for sure. Yeah, nice. Yeah, kind of resembles the fat bastard uh, climber, climber blocks, climber pinch blocks. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Nice. And then uh, Becca, like we should do a Becca watch too, man. Like she's doing a really good job. Her and Paul uh, are putting together out uh, some really good videos out there for everybody to see. And she just completely obliterated 48 kilograms on the two and a half inch crusher, a dozen reps. I mean, it was, and and that's like record breaking lifting right there. That that right. like exceeds the, the the women's record on that lift, and she hit it for for twelve reps. Yep, yep. No, she is. Yeah, that that's that's no. I've been watching a lot of their videos. They got some. They've got some really good training videos. They're always hitting it hard. No. Yeah. Yep. Good for her. Yeah, man. Good for her. And with that, dude, I I got nothing left, man. I I, I you just bled me dry. My whole entire yeah. list. I was afraid we wouldn't even get through it, and you just bled me dry, Alan. So now the whole rest of the show is yours. Yes. So one thing I had left, just a, a, a mention of Chez. It looks like he's back in fine form. You see he just smashed that, that what was it, 194.5 rated gripper? Hit it for some you know what you call that? So, huh. You know what you call that? He's butter right now. You know why? Because he's on a roll. He's on a roll. <laughs> yep. Yeah. He's well, got some you, you momentum know, behind him. Holy cow, he's unstoppable now, dude. Oh yeah. Every every time he trains grippers he goes up another five pounds. So yeah, hard yeah. not to ride that way. If he's he's definitely getting mm-hmm. back up there. So awesome. Yeah, that's yeah, some dude. that's some great yeah. improvement, especially for a guy that's been, been doing it as long as he has. You know, to keep, yeah. keep those kind of gains coming. So yeah. Awesome. Hey, and you know what, dude? He could have he could have let that injury the injuries that he's had, you know, totally shut him down. And he could have never come back, and we never would have heard from him again. But you know what? That's not in him. That's not how he acts. That's not how he works. That's not what he does. He comes back. So my hat's off to him, dude. Very, very respectable the way that he's come back. You know, he took his time, and he got back into it, and he didn't rush things, and now he's right back where he left off, dude. Awesome. Yeah, yep. He's been real smart about it. So I... I, I hope he gets to where he's headed. I, you know, definitely, definitely got the MM7 in his future. So, and um, sounds yeah. like he was going to be working on the the MM3 offhand too. So, so good mm-hmm. for him. Keep keep moving up the moving up the ladder. I want to see people hit yep. more of their goals. So, yep, yeah, buddy. Yep, good for him. Looking looking forward to meeting a lot of these guys too at some of the some of the upcoming competitions. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah, you'll be seeing him at uh, South Jersey Four, right? Yep, yep, yep. It sounds like his training's underway on that even. So yeah, cool. Yeah, should be a lot of fun coming yeah, up. Awesome. Alrighty. Okay. Well, are you gonna wrap her up? Did that do it for you? Yeah, yeah. I guess so. So all right. Well, that's it for for episode eleven of of this week in grip. A lot of another good one. Lots of great things happened out there this week. So. Uh, well, as usual, everyone, uh, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Any any ideas, questions, suggestions, feedback, make sure you leave them in the comments. And uh, keep up the hard work. I, I, I love seeing a lot of these things, a lot of innovative lists out there, different things. And, uh, yeah, good stuff. I guess we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see you again next week. Been a good one.